Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice, and this is the Prayer Connection, where you make a connection with God. Yes, this is now the Prayer Connection, where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes, it's designed by God to catapult you and to launch you forward into another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Be blessed, God. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name. Father God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be thanked, God. You are worthy to be worshipped, God. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Saints, we serve a worthy God. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all our worship. Father God, you are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be extolled. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be honored oh god hallelujah he's worthy saints our god is worthy of all that we have within us i will bless him at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth you should praise him at all times saints and his praises shall continually be in your mouth hallelujah oh we give him glory today there's no other god like unto our god there's no other God like unto our God. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Now, saints, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what you're going through today, what trial, what tribulation, what problem, what circumstance, what situation, what peril, what problem, no matter what it is, God is in control. Even when it looks like God's not in control, believe me, believe me, I saw from God, Jesus Christ, he is in control of all things. That's why we worship you, Lord God. That's why we praise you, O God. And that's why we glorify your name. Father God, have your way today. As we come forth on this broadcast today, minister to your people, O God. Give them a word that would encourage them. Because we are in the last day, saints. We are in the last days in the name of Jesus. And I know you heard it before, but you're hearing it again today that we are in the last days. We are in the last days. Look around you. Look at the signs of the times. It's already prophesied that in the last days, we'll see what we, we are seeing now. There be earthquakes in diverse places, in many places, and it is. All kinds of natural calamities and natural disasters, and so it is. In the last days, there be false prophets and false Christ arisen, and we see it is. Hallelujah. In the last days, in the name of Jesus, there will be pestilence and plagues in the earth realm, and it is. We got Corona, we got the Delta variant, and other variants. These are pestilence and pla plagues, it's all around us. So we are in the last days, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So since we are in the last days, and Jesus' return is so close, it is nigh, it is even at the doors. His return is imminent. It's imminent, that means it can happen any moment, any second, any minute. All things are set. The stage is set for Jesus' return. Will you be ready when he comes? I want to be ready when he comes. He could come at any moment, any second, any minute. And I want to be ready when he comes. When he comes. Because he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And after a while, it's all going to be over. After a while. It's all going to be over. I want to be ready when it comes. Let's read today in the name of Jesus. Let's read in the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. 2 and 3. In the name of Jesus. 1 John 2 and 3. Let us read. 
glory to his name. Glory to his name. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now are we the daughters of God. Now are we the children of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. But we know. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Beloved, he's talking to you. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Beloved, now we are the sons and daughters of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when Jesus shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that has this hope in him, purifies himself even as he is pure in the name of Jesus so it's it's telling us in this verse that we are the children of God we are the sons of God we are the daughters of God we are the children of God we are the sons of God we are the daughters of God we are in Jesus name you are right now if you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior you are the you are a child of God and he says, we don't really know what we're going to look like when he comes back. When we meet him in the air. Because he's coming back in Jesus' name. We don't know all the details, all the specifics of what we're going to look like and be like when he comes back. But we know one thing the Bible tells us in 1 John 3. That we will be like him. It says, "We, but we know that we shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. So we don't know all the details of how our, these bodies, these 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 natural bodies, these earthly bodies. We don't know how it's gonna how it's gonna look when we get change in the twinkling of an eye. Change in the twinkling. We don't know the all the pacificalities, but we know we're gonna be like him because we shall see him as he, we're gonna be just like him. Jesus Christ has an imperishable body. So we will have an imperishable body. Jesus has an incorruptible body. We will have an incorruptible body. Jesus has an immortal body. You will have an immortal body if you are a child of God. Jesus has a heavenly body. We will have a heavenly body. Because we will be just like him. Jesus has a spiritual body. We will have a spiritual body. We shall be just like him. Because, because, because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we're going to be change in the twinkling of an eye he said that the dead in christ will rise first when jesus comes back and we see him in the clouds he said that the dead in christ going to rise first they're going to come out of those graves your loved one's going to come out of the grave if they're born again they're coming out that grave it's going to be a great resurrection of all those that have died in christ or asleep in christ and sometimes the bible tells it says they are asleep because they take their body take on the appearance of sleep. Just like if you go to your room and your mama in the bed and she's and she's laying there asleep, she eyes is closed, she's not talking to you because she's sleep. She's not communicating to you because she's sleep. So the in, in the spirit realm, when I born again when I when a born again believer leave this earth realm and he it, it, his body takes on the appearance of sleep in that grave, it's like they're asleep. But there's there this is a life. As ever, when this, when this, when your spirit leaves your body, your body take is dead. The body is dead, but your spirit is awake. It's alive. It's it's fervent. It's 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 right in the presence of God. Your spirit is in the presence of God. It's in it's in the glory realm. It's in heaven, and it's alive and well. But your body is asleep. Your body might be dead. But the real you is alive and well. In heaven with God. In the presence of the God and the holy angels. In the presence of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So the body might be asleep. The body might be dead. But the real you is alive when you die. 
when you leave this earth realm, when you take your last breath. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's our spirit man, the spiritual part of us that inherits the kingdom of God. And we don't know what we're going to be like when, when he comes back exactly. But we, the Bible says we shall, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. This, this natural body is going to take on the spiritual body. Our earthly body is going to become heavenly. The corruptible body is going to take on incorruption. The mortal body is going to be immortal. The perishable body imperishable. When we see him in the clouds and the, the rapture. Because he's coming back. He's going to be going to meet him in the air. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. And those that are alive and remain. is going to be called up together to meet him in the air. And we shall always be with the Lord. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. And we all should be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We will, we will look just like them. And we meet them in the air. And we go on to glory. We go on to heaven. Oh, he said, comfort one another with these words. We comfort. But the thing about it, since it's all true, and it is. It's, God's word is true. God's word is yea, and amen to them that believe. This word is true. This word is accurate. The word is true. Since it says this word is true, that we shall see him as he is, that we will be caught up together, meet him in the air, that we'll be raptured from this earth realm into the heaven realm. The dead in Christ will rise first. And those that are alive and remain should be caught up with them, and we should all should be changed as a twinkling of eye, and we should go on to glory in a split second, in a twinkling of an eye. Now, since this is all truth, this verse also goes on to say. Because this is true, it says every man that has this hope, and this is a blessed hope. This is a blessed hope from, from, from the, the, all the sorrow and pain you suffered in the earth realm. You got hope today. When someone dies as a born again believer, we don't sorrow as others that have no hope. We have hope. We know where they're at. They left the earth realm, but they're in the heaven realm. We have a hope. And the Bible says, and every man that has this hope purifies himself. Every man that has this hope purifies himself. If you believe that Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, if you receive him as your personal Savior, you know that this earth realm is not all there is. That after this life, there's life after this. That when you die, it's not the end. It's the beginning of glory. It's eternity. It's, you'll be with Jesus Christ for eternity in your glorified body, in mortal body, in perishable body, in corruptible body, your glorified body. We have hope. Hallelujah. We got hope today. We got hope today in the mighty name of Jesus. We got hope today. You have hope today. Some of you have lost loved ones in this COVID virus and this pandemic and this plague. But if they're born again, you're going to see them again in the mighty name of Jesus. We got hope after this. Because pretty soon, it's all going to be over after a while. But it's a hope. And if, if you have this hope, it says it purifies you. It says every man that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. So since I know that Jesus Christ is coming back. And it soon could happen any moment, any second, any minute, any minute. I know we know that. Because it's imminent. It's right, it's he's right there even at the door. It this hope purifies me. In other words, it keeps me humble. It keeps me repenting to God and keeping myself clean. I don't want to come back and hear and he's spamming and singing. This hope purifies me, it purges me, it washes me. It makes an impact on my life. Jesus soon return. The return of Jesus Christ. In the rapture for me. It purifies me. It makes an impact on my life. It makes an impact on my conduct. It makes an impact on my behavior. It makes an impact. It makes an impact on my lifestyle. If you have this hope today that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, could come back any moment, any second, any minute, it should purify your life. It should keep you out of sin. It should keep you at the altar. It should keep you repenting. It should keep you clean. It should keep you pure. 
purified because you want to be ready when it comes. It purifies us in the name of Jesus, having this hope that Jesus Christ is soon to return. It purifies us. It changes us. It, it makes an impact on our lifestyle. It makes an impact on our behavior. It makes an impact on our conduct. We want to be clean when it comes. We want to be doing right when he comes. We want to be working for the kingdom when he comes. When he comes, when he comes, because he's coming. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Jesus Christ is coming. Lord God, let this hope that we have in you, Lord God, let it purify us. It's purifying us right now. Father God is keeping us on our knees. It's keeping us at the altar. It's keeping us walking in a pure life. It's keeping us walking in holy, in a holy lifestyle. It's keeping us, this, this, this hope that we have, that Jesus Christ can come in any moment, any second, any minute. It's keeping us humble. It's keeping us purified. It's keeping us asking to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all the righteousness. Purge me, oh God. Wash me, oh God. Purify me, oh God. Cleanse me, oh God. It's is doing that for us in the name of Jesus if you have this hope I know it's purifying you it's keeping you clean it's keeping you washed under the blood you keep going under the blood of Jesus you keep at the throne of grace wanting to be clean and purged and clean because when he come back we will want him to find us in a purified lifestyle in a purified clean lifestyle pure holy righteous in the name of Jesus. The Bible also goes on to say in 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. Let's read. It says in 1 John chapter 2, 28. And now, little children, and now, little children, and now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we shall have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming so just like I said earlier when, when he comes back for us he's gonna come back in the twinkling of an eye he's gonna come back in the clouds and those that are dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we that are alive and remain, we should be all caught up together. We all should be changed at the same time. All those, all those loved ones, their body part going to come back together. The ashes all over the, all over the eons. The ashes, all the molecules of the ashes are going to come back and combustalize. And they're going to get caught to all the, all the dead bones and the ashes that's been spread. All oh, those caskets going to be open and all those body parts going to come back together. The ashes going to want to materialize and there's going to be glory come back together and it's, we all going to be glorified. Our bodies be made have a glorified body as we get caught up to meet him in the air. And we have this hope in us, it's purifying us. And it says here in 1 John 2 and 8, 2 and chapter, chapter 2, 28, when we should have confidence and not be ashamed. We want to have confidence and not be ashamed at his coming. We don't want to shrink from him at his coming. We don't want to draw back from him at his coming. We want to receive him with open arms. I don't want no regrets. I want, to, I want to be doing right when he comes back. I want him catch me arguing. Catch me fighting. Catch, catch me in sin. I don't want Jesus to catch me in disobedience. I don't want him to catch me in rebellion. I don't want. I don't want to shrink from him at his coming. I don't want. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't want to draw back. I want to be have confidence and boldness. That I've been living a purified life, and when I do sin, I just go straight and say, "God, forgive me of my sin, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness." I don't want to shrink back. It says, "And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before Him at His coming." In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, you need to receive him as your personal savior. You need to receive him as your personal savior. He said, if you confess with your mouth, 
the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With your mouth, you make confession of salvation. And with your heart, you believe. At the end of this broadcast, I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Because the Bible says, Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. If you're already born again, we're going to lead you in a prayer rededication. It's nothing like taking on a new a new a new relationship and just just refreshing your relationship renewing your vows we're going to do that pretty soon hold on hope is coming let's read in james 5 7 and 8 it says be patient then my brothers and sisters until the lord's coming be patient my sisters brothers and sisters until the Lord's coming this is James chapter 5 7 and 8 in the NIV James chapter 5 7 and 8 in the NIV it says be patient then my brothers and sisters until the coming of the Lord see how the farmer waits for the, see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops and patiently waits for the autumn and spring rains it says see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains you too be patient and stand firm because the lord's coming is near it says be patient the stage is set Jesus Christ come back any moment, any second, any minute. He could. Everything's already set. It's already done. It's already set. But be patient. God is waiting on some of us that's not ready. If we come back in the clouds, He's waiting. So you be wait. You be patient too. He says, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. The Lord's coming is near. And those of us that do know Jesus, we should be out and about telling the goodness of the Lord. Do you remember in, in the history about Paul Revere? Paul Revere was a man. I remember the story. He said that when the British was going to invade, he ran through the streets at midnight on his horse saying, The British is coming. The British is coming. Beware, beware, be warned. The British is coming. That's what Paul Revere did. He ran through the streets and he warned the people that the British was coming. The British was going to invade. And he was warning them because saying the British is coming. The British is coming. The British is coming. We are the Paul Revere's of our day. You are the spiritual Paul Revere's. You should run to the land and say, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Get your life in order, get your life in order. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Get your life in order. We are the Paul Revere's of our day. We are the Paul Revere's of 2021. We're out in the streets, in the highways, in the byways, telling everybody, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Get your life in order. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Tell them, tell them, Jesus is coming. We are the Paul Revere's of our day. You might not be an evangelist, but, but the Bible says do the work of an evangelist. Be the Paul Revere's of your day. Do the work of an evangelist. You don't got to have a piece of paper to evangelize. You do the work. The Bible says do the work of an evangelist. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus can come back any moment, any second. Just come back any moment, any minute, any second. He's coming. He's coming. It's going to be all over after a while. Now, the Bible goes on and said Revelations, talking about the, 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 the imminency. The, the imminency, which means he can come in, Jesus can come any moment, any second, any, any minute. Talks about it in Revelations. Let us read Revelations 22 and 12. Revelation 22 and 12 says, And behold, I come quickly. This is Jesus talking. He says, Behold, I come quickly. 
And my reward is with me to give every man according to his works shall be. Jesus says, Revelation 20, 22 and 12, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his works shall be. Revelations 3 and 11 reads, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Behold, Jesus is talking. Revelation 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to, to that which thou hast that no man Take thy crown. Revelations 22 and 20 reads, He that testifies those things says, Surely I'll come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today, this is your day. You want to see him when he comes. Only born-again believers will be raptured out of the earth when he comes. The rest of creation will be here for seven years of tribulation that the earth has never seen. You think coronavirus is something? You think the Delta virus is something? You think this, all this death you see is something? You think the earth disasters is something? You think the earthquakes and the wildfires is something? You see the global change, the, the global climate, that the earth is getting heated up because one day the earth is going to be destroyed by fire. It has already started. That's why we have global climate change, all this. If you think this is devastating, it's nothing Yes, it's going to be a seven-year tribulation coming when the church is raptured out of this earth realm. When the rat church is, ra is raptured out of this earth realm, that's when the seven years of tribulation is going to start. You don't want to be in the tribulation. You want to be here in the plagues. Read it. You want to. You, you want to be. You want to be called to meet him when he comes. Let me lead you in a simple prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. Repeat it. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I come to you. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. And I believe in my heart that, you, that God raised you from the dead. And you said I could be saved. With my mouth, I just confessed it. And with my heart, I believe it. If he said that simple prayer, you are a born again believer. And if he comes at this second, you will be caught up to meet him in the air. You'll be caught up and raptured out of this earth realm and to the heaven realm. Read your word. Get a Bible. Read your word. Talk to God in prayer. Join the good, ask God to lead you to a good church and hang around the other saints because you're going to be with them any, from in eternity. Start now. Amen. And those of you that are born again, you know you're saved, but your, but your relationship has grown cold and just not doing right. I'm going to lead you a simple prayer. Say, Father, I come to you. I repent. I want to do my first works first. I want to go back to my first love. Forgive me of all my sins. I rededicate my life. Say it. Go ahead, say it. I rededicate my life. I renew my vows. We start again. In Jesus' name. Yes, nothing like repentance. He said, if you confess your sins, he will be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, saints, we want to be ready when he comes because he's going to come quickly. he come any moment, any second, any minute. And, we, and we're going to be ready when he comes. Amen. Well, saints, I'll see you next time on the Prayer Connection. 
where you make a connection with God. Love you, and most of all, God loves you.